Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I am Timmy. If it's your first time here, welcome to my channel and subscribe because I mentioned if it's your first time here, right? And if it's not your first time here, welcome back. See, in today's video, we're just going to have a chat. We're going to sit down and speak to each other. Even though I'm talking to my camera, I know eventually, you know, I'm talking to people. So yeah, I'm trying to be comfortable. <laughs> enough for this <sighs> yeah so anyways in today's video mm, i do not have a script and that's because i want to talk from my heart <laughs> i want to share some of my experience some motivation and because i know there are a lot of us that are on you know this particular journey <laughs> whichever one it is so yeah Anyways, from the title of this video, I was not even sure what to name or title this video because I didn't want it to, you know, look too sensitive. But the first thing I would like to say is no condition is permanent. If you just come here as an immigrant into this country, you are you not had anything figured out figured out, and that's because it, it's a new journey and you are, it's like you're starting afresh especially if you have no one in this country so whatever you're going through it's not only you see it's, if you want to cry go to a corner cry i didn't cry i'm not trying to say i'm a hard girl but there are days and days and days i sat on my bed and you know i was thinking I was literally always thinking I lost to it that's the first time I lost to it without effort because <laughs> I'll sit down on my bed and be thinking for three hours straight four hours straight I was thinking of my life because why I haven't had anything figured out and I didn't want to have anybody I know what there was a time I posted like my story on on uh, on Instagram story and uh, it was quite touching because you know those are th things i went through and i purposely saved those pictures saved those videos because i knew i was going to make reference to them one day so people can see that you know we go through stuff these days most of the things you see on instagram are flamboyant flashy already made things no one necessarily posts their downfall their negativity they always post positive things about themselves and to some extent is realistic because Instagram is for show off or Instagram can be anything you want it to be but then the reality part of life is that we have struggles and people don't like to post it some people don't mind they post it and some people will never eh? <laughs> if you put gun or knife to their head they will never or to their neck or anything to their head or neck they will never ever post it because they don't want to see people or they don't want people to see them struggle i don't know why well i don't really care because you know having struggles is part of life it makes you tough it makes you learn lessons it makes you make you know decisions that when you look back you're like i really wanted to do this i can't tell you how many things i thought of doing when i was struggling you know last year i will mention some of them number one i sold my gold earring my mom bought for me and it was an expensive earring but because i was selling it for not scrap value but for like pawn shop yeah like where you go and pawn things you know <laughs> that's why i collected my 100 pounds and kept it pushing that was one thing and when i look back i'm like did i really sell that earring because my mom gave that earring to me and she was hoping I'll wear it, you know, be happy that she bought me something expensive and I sold it. But yeah, I needed food more than I needed an earring. <sighs> this camera I'm using to film, I've packed it up. It's my second lens. I was about to go and sell it because why? I needed money. So those are one of those things I did and I look back and I'm like, <sighs> if only, if only only if only if but it doesn't mean those things will define me i see people going about nowadays and they use people's condition to define them i mean <clears throat> as if I, my head was not 
correct enough when i came in last year i downloaded or oh, i had some like bumble when i was coming here so i just switched it to like uk bumble and i met quite a few people there and the moment you say oh you work in a care home i don't even really start telling them oh i worked in the kitchen of a care home i just say oh i work in a care home because you know job is job <laughs> but don't talk to you again because why would i be talking to a carer I don't know if it's out of job shaming or if it's out of I'm um, better than her or whatever but if you're a kind of person that you use people's condition to define them to judge them to just look at them you just you know size them up honestly I can't say I feel bad for you but you need to change your attitude because those are things that they didn't you know necessarily choose not like they didn't choose it but it's a condition it's meant to change i had to do that job because i needed money and thankfully over here in the uk your minimum wage is your minimum wage you feel like working in kill you feel like be sweeping the floor you feel like working factory except you're working in maybe one construction site and then you paid you're getting paid 40 pounds per hour or 30 pounds per hour you know those people make a lot of money yeah but over here your minimum wage is your minimum wage the last thing you should be doing is job shaming somebody i can't even i i remember someone i was talking to and i i said oh i'm i'm working in the kitchen and the next thing he said oh i never got to do those type of jobs obviously you didn't because your parents paid your money your parents paid your way through school we, many of us didn't have that when we moved here and dollar uh, dollar rate or pound rate to naira was quite discouraging when we moved so it was quite a struggle for us so you shouldn't be using that to judge somebody it doesn't even make any sense moving on when i got my job as a kitchen attendant it was a very good and happy job for me seeing i was so happy doing that job left to me it was a very comfortable good job for me i worked twice a week because of my job restriction etc and all that and then I, I, my friend was always wondering you know why is she happy washing plates why would i be happy washing plates my dear i'm collecting pounds i'm washing plates i'm collecting pounds pounds selling <laughs> so whenever i wash plates i had access to all the food that was in the kitchen if if you can't even eat it yourself the chef will tell you don't worry i'll pack for you I'll, I'll pack it for you you know yeah on top of the fact that i had free food it was just something that gave me joy because obviously i had a job i searched and searched and searched for job before i eventually had one so yeah that's that is gone and gradually my life started getting better things started to change I had a better job. I became a support worker, a mental health support worker. I learned so much about mental health. I fell in love with mental health. Even though I keep saying I don't have mental health, I know why I say it and I keep saying I don't have a mental health. But yeah, I still love mental health. Yeah, so I'm a men mental health. <laughs> There are two ways I pronounce it. There's the Nigerian way and the British way. So I like sometimes I mix it together. So the Nigerian way is mental health, and the British way is mental health. <laughs> I still am a mental health enthusiast, and I like everything mental health. And from there, I got to you know talk to my friends who applied to you know their dream jobs, and this is another point I'm going to emphasize on if you are in the uk mm -hmm. you just come here your circle of friends matter a lot i remember the video i did with tk in the description here if you haven't seen it it's where we explain how we became project managers <sighs> tk said something and she said your circle will uplift you to the point they can or the point where they can or they know about if you are friends with people in construction they will uplift you to you know places they'll give you tips on how to apply into construction rules on how to do this and do that and move up the ladder or like you know even get a job because that's what they know if your circle is um, a group of doctors to help you on how to practice better and if you are looking to apply it to a another 
you know role or a new job to help you sort it out and give you information concerning your doctor role my own group of friends are a group of project managers project control product managers and all they did was push me I was very comfortable being a support worker, honestly. I was making good money because I worked full time, especially after school. And it was not until this year, February, I started taking like job applications very seriously. And not because I didn't think I could do it, but it was strenuous. If you know, if you've applied for a graduate role or if you've applied for an entry role, I'm not going to explain how strenuous it is applying to those roles. You have to really show. It's very, very competitive. A company can take just one person a year. You have to wait till the next year. It's very, very competitive. So you have to show that <laughs> it's me you're going to take. And out of laziness, I didn't really take it seriously. I will be honest. It was later on, you know, I needed that flexibility and because being a support worker, you work on site, whereas being in this job, you have, you know, abundance of flexibility. I needed flexibility. I needed uh, to do something I studied. And of course, I love construction. I've always been in the construction industry, right from Nigeria. Since I left second, you know, in secondary school, I did TD. I was like the best in TD. I've always liked construction i was like you know what if i don't do mental health i can do construction i can find a career in makeup or in cooking those are things that i know i'll thrive in and uh, my friend tk <laughs> with her help again helped me through my application explained everything i needed to know gave me tips on how to apply and they just pushed me forward until i did everything myself I went through seeing the moment I told her I got a call for interview. <laughs> my goodness. If you know how happy she was, that's why sometimes I feel this job is not my job, it's for TK. <laughs> anyway, this glory to God. God got me this job and the angel used the TK. So yeah, she and a group of my other friends, she, Tito, Damola, and some one other person they helped me through you know practicing getting familiar with interview questions getting to know everything i know i'm kind of repeating what i've said before but i'm emphasizing on the fact that if you are just starting your journey here or you're halfway through your journey and things aren't looking that good yet my dear see i'm here to tell you that it's going to get better and better and best especially if you believe in yourself this is a country that enables people like is a thriving country is a thriving environment it enables you to go above and beyond it just pushes you forward and this is a condition this is an environment that if you have so much in you, you are yeah, the one that will get tired. I remember when I just came here in January last year, I was posting videos on YouTube every single day for like two weeks straight. So you yeah, are the one that will get tired. There is Wi-Fi, there is lights, there is a conducive environment to film. Like your videos are fine, except you are the one that scatter your house. So that's, that's just one example of this is an enabling environment. So if you are here and you are thinking, oh, when is it going to be smooth for me? When is it going to get good? It's going to get good, honestly. Just keep believing in yourself and do what you are doing. Do it well, first of all. You have to be very good at what you do to even be able to take that mentality into your new role, your new job. And if you're out there and you're using people's conditions to judge them, I cannot emphasize on how I suffered in the dating world <laughs> last year. <laughs> God. It was like a tear. Mm? Some men used to look, even women say, what am I gonna say? Some women used to grade you eh, concerning your, your tear in this country. So if you come here and you know you introduce yourself and you say, because if you want to date in England, you have to download the dating app. You cannot just walk up to somebody and say, hello, babe, that's termed harassment. So um, if you introduce yourself and say what you do, they know whether to keep talking to you or to 
you know, to be pushing. So if you say you're a student, they will know to your phone. We will say, oh, I work in Kiniko Kiniko Kevisa. Oh, uh, I came in as a web developer. Hmm. Say to, or you say, oh, I've been here for maybe six, you can say I've been here for seven years. Hmm. You know, and so on and so forth. And I'm like, why are people like this? What happened to, you know, looking to be with somebody for their genuity, looking to be with somebody for their personality and their character. Those are things that are fickle, okay? They can change. I'm not trying to wish anybody bad, but somebody that is on tier four can always move to tier two and become a resident. I don't understand. Things change. Condition is not permanent. So if you are out there using people's condition to judge them, bruh, you need to change. <laughs> I can't tell you enough how you know you need to change your whatever. I'm not here to brag or anything, but since I have leveled up, since God have pushed me forward, let me put it that way. Whew, I've seen things. I'm telling you, and that's just to tell you, <laughs> Now you wait there, wait the rain. Now people will follow. You wait, you know, they happen for you. That's you know, that's what people want to be familiar with but again it tells on your character okay and if you know what i'm saying sounds familiar you've suffered on you know dating sites you've suffered you know just discrimination based on how you came into this country let me know honestly because i know i'm not the only one that went through all these type of things but yeah at the end of the day if you believe in god <laughs> It's all going to be great and you know best for you. But yeah, I was hoping this would be like a 10 minutes video. Well, obviously it isn't because I had a lot to say. But yeah, that's the end of my chit chat gist. So like I said earlier, I'm blabbing now, but yeah, like I said earlier, I really want to hear you guys story in the comment section. I will see you guys in the next one. And if you have any video I guess for me to film, let me know. Bye. Mwah.